Did you know that as a Splatterween, Splatfests have been happening for over a year now in the full game of Splatoon 3? Over the course of 407 days, we have been blessed with 10 different Splatfests. Some were great, some were okay, and others did indeed exist. So with a nice even 10 Splatfests behind us now, let's take a look at Splatfests and see how things have developed over the past year. Also, please don't take anything I say about these teams seriously. It's all fun at the end of the day. <clears throat> the first Splatfest was Desert Island themed. The three teams were Team Gear, Team Grub, and Team Departure from Life. I still don't understand why 21 percent of y'all even win on team fun. Playing Mario Wonder in handheld mode is gonna help you pass a singular good afternoon before your switch dies and you stare at the sunset reflecting where it all went wrong. Team Grub, y'all are my friends though. Get you some beans, some rice, some cheeseburgers, I don't know, but you guys are cooking, pun intended. But there was one team to rule them all and that was Team Gear. We had our shovels, lanterns, hunting rifles, and everything out to win this Splatfest. I myself was beating people up in open and pro battles and tricolor I didn't get to play. So for you newer Splatoon 3 players, back in the early days, Tricolor could only be fought when members of all three teams were present, and the winning team at halftime had to be the defending team. As much as people crap on Tricolor, it's one of those modes where when you're talking about it with colleagues, it sounds like an awesome addition to Splatfest, but in practice it just, it don't work. I will say, the most entertaining thing that came out of early game Tricolor was the winning team just disappearing from open battles. Like after halftime, Team Fun was nowhere to be found. Back then, Tricolor didn't appear as a separate option for the defending team, so you had a random chance of joining an open in battle, getting quickly taken out back, and then getting jumped for three minutes straight in a tricolor battle. That's what just had people on the winning team clinging to pro battles like a shy child clings to their parent. Anyway, all tricolor craziness aside, Gear was able to win the first Splatfest. Moving on, the next Splatfest was Grass versus Water versus Fire. Team Grass had adorable turtles and weed cats. Team Water had aquatic ninjas and homosexual ducks. And Team Fire had fire monkeys and Florida man's arch nemesis. With all three having such amazing options, it was a tough choice, but I eventually ended up going Team Water. Now at this point, Shiver had won a Splatfest, two if you count the demo, so the community wanted either Fry or Babe Man to take a dub. So as much as we love Team Grass, we had to box them. Get it? Cause like fighting, boxing, and we had to like put them in a Pokemon box. And <clears throat> team Water, the team our beloved Manta Ray was on, swept the rest of the competition. The first Big Man sweep was Platoon 3. The results were pretty close though, and the popularity of each team was much more even than in the first fest. I was even able to get a nice 23-22 in pro battles. <laughs> Too bad I was seven points short of being on the top 100. But I was still able to snag a few sea snails, a cute picture from my locker, and another Splatfest win to keep my win streak going. After having a quiet December due to... We started off the new year with spicy versus sweet versus sour. Now my tongue will shrivel up like a raisin if I have more than one teaspoon of salsa in my mouth, and there aren't many notable sour foods that I liked, so I was on Team Sweet. Now with Big Man and Shiver having a win underneath their belts, the community rallied around Fry to give her a Splatfest win. I miss those times. <laughs> I probably does too. So banding together in the defense of delicious desserts worked and Team Sweet won the Splatfest. It was narrow though. Team Spicy won the new tricolor category and if just one more of these categories went to Team Spicy, then they would have won the fest. They're already used to having utter chaos wrapped in their mouths whenever they eat a pepper, so of course they were gonna take the chaotic tricolor turf war category. And speaking of tricolor, they found a way to make it less rare than a shiny Pokemon. As of the chill season, they added mirror matches to take place should players from all three teams not be found, and they allowed players to be attackers or defenders regardless of their team. Also in this Splatfest, the floats became a thing. Now I had a reason for locking myself in my room for five hours, anxiously waiting for my several festival shells to activate and give me a special battle. Because if I got a picture of my girl Fry, then the bloodshot eyes and the carpal tunnel was all worth it. <laughs> Next there was the Chocolate Splatfest, where you had people supporting dark chocolate for the bitter but amazing taste, milk chocolate for a nice mix of sugar and chocolate, and white chocolate for being the sweetest of the three and having white ink. Now this is the Splatfest where a certain hidden figure began to make itself known. Normally when playing Splatfest, you're mainly paired with people in your region so NSO doesn't have a stroke. Peeps in the Americas get to play together, Europeans get to do European things, and most notably the Japanese, which is where the bulk of Splatoon players are, play together. Now over here in the States, I was ready to continue my winning streak. I had my victory tweet planned and my Hershey's bar in hand. I was congratulating myself on a job well done before the thing even ended. But I started to feel my confidence falter at the halftime report because white chocolate was actually in the lead by 4%. Now I already saw that they got the conch shell bonus and I thought that was just a fluke. It was all they were gonna get. And then a day later, not only did milk chocolate lose, but we got swept. And I'm over here like, what's going on? How do we get here? I'm running the data and checking my calculations like a math major when their solution is 30 times higher than what's on the answer key. My polls have never been wrong. There's no way my poll would lead me astray. Every Splatoon fan alive is subscribed to me. Then it hit me. 
White chocolate is really popular in Japan. Like, sure, some people like it in the other regions, but it's super popular in Japan. They rigged the Splatfest and ruined my win streak. How dare the Japanese have more players than the West does. It's not fair. But with that Splatfest done, next there was Nessie versus Aliens versus Bigfoot. And you thought Japan was a threat? Which they really aren't, they just have a lot of Splatoon players over there. Then you won't believe what began happening after this Splatfest. So starting in this Splatfest, Votes and Conch Shells both got points taken from them and added to the Tricolor category, making it a stunning 18 points. Which means, so long as a team won Tricolor in just one of the other battle categories, there was no other combination that could beat them out, making Tricolor even more valuable. For this Splatfest, I teamed up with a friend to help him win another Splatfest because I had a perfect streak aside from the Chocolate Splatfest that Japan Japan stole by playing the game. I was thinking this Splatfest was gonna be my return to the top, but remember when I said that winning Tricolor in another battle category would automatically win you the fest? Yeah, Shiver did just that. This made Nessie the first Splatfest team ever to win without the popular vote. Gran was still within like 1%, but still. And honestly, I feel so bad for Fry here. Not only is she the only idol who's lost while having the most popular team during a Splatfest, but the two categories she did win were the two categories that had points sucked out of them. But hey, it was just one Splatfest. Fest. Fry will get her revenge soon, right? Right? With Tears of the Kingdom's release inbound, the obligatory Zelda Splatfest came with it, with the three choices being power, wisdom, and courage. I, of course, went Team Wisdom, because brain power trumps courage and having people bark like rabid dogs every single time that you appear on screen. The Splatfest was actually the most fair, and thus one of the most fun fests I ever got to play in Splatoon 3. The most popular team, Power, was only 4% more popular than the least popular team, Courage. But the one thing I did not like was this map. It's nice how they did a little Triforce theme map, but this map just was wasn't it, Chief. I felt like I was crammed into a box at the bottom of the map, and unless you were at the top, there were so many blind spots I couldn't account for. The high school trigonometry had came back to haunt me with this map, and it was not generous. Oh, and Shiver won this Splatfest too, being her first sweep. Now she had two Splatfest wins in a row. Now you think this is when we'd all rally together to net another win for Big Man or Fry, should they have decent teams at least, but not this time. The training wheels were off, so she just won again. And again, this woman could not be stopped. And then came the anniversary Splatfest. Who would be the best leader, Shiver, Fry, or Big Man? Of course, half the community completely disregarded the question and just went with their favorite idol, though. Of course, as with Callie vs. Marie, whenever an idol Splatfest is about, there's always a fair amount of toxicity, too. You couldn't go Team Shiver or else you were a simp because society has completely stripped that word of all of its meaning. You couldn't go Big Man because then you were a sheep who just followed all the memes. And you couldn't go Fry because, ooh, large forehead, bad, ooh. Which, come on now, let's leave those jokes behind us. At least until Pearl returns in side order. Now, for me, actually looking at the prompt, all three of them seemed like cool options. Each of them had some good qualities that would make for a great leader. Eventually, I etched out Fry out of my head though, and I was about to make a deal with the devil herself and join Shiver's team. Until I was manipulated to go on Big Man because of a coin flip. One of my friends I was playing with that day was going so far as to say we wouldn't be friends if I picked Shiver. They were saying to me, your two choices are Fry and Big Man. Who's Shiver? We don't know her. Like, grade A manipulation was going on here. During the fest, we actually ran into a ton of Fry fans. While I counted her out in my mind, she won the vote of many people in my region. It was getting to the point where Team Shiver seemed like the urban legend. However, the halftime results came around and boom, she had the lead. But the thing that that made me happy as it wasn't by much. Less than a percent was something we could wrangle from her team. With this, Tricolor opened up, and now all Tricolor maps from past Splatfest could be played on. This included the OGs like Sturgeon Shipyard, new ones like Eeltail Alley, and Pythagoras' Utopia. Now I was thinking we still have a shot, but this woman? She was cooking overseas, and we would see her three-course meal Sunday evening as BAM! She took her fifth Splatfest win in a row. Big Man was able to take pro battles, you're welcome, and Fry was able to take conch shells. But Shiver took everything else, including half the community, apparently. And that brings us to Splatterween and the gloriously decorated plaza. Shiver's selling her soul to Satan is starting to show visual consequences. Fry's looking beautiful with her little metal accessories, and Big Man's got the Lowe's bed sheet on deck! If you guys wonder why I think Big Man is an S-tier idol, this is why. His caring personality is up there with Marina's. He's one of the funniest idols we've ever had. And no, I repeat, no other idol could pull off this look like him. Big Man is just that guy. But will Bedsheet, Big Man, and Fry be able to take Shiver down now? The theme this time is zombies versus skeletons versus ghosts, and Big Man and Fry seem to have all the popularity this time, assuming overseas countries outside my channel's reach don't invalidate my polls again. It seems like those two teams might be able to do it.
And boy, howdy, did they. Team Ghost was able to prevail by getting points from Conchell, Tricolor, and Popularity. Oh my god, the popularity. Also, Team Skeletons didn't do too shabby either, winning Open and Pro, leaving the Shark with Zilch. Now there is one more thing we need to do. We need to give our girl Fry another win. Again, granted she has a team that we actually support, since that's the core point of Splatfest. We have ruined her winning streak, and now hopefully Fry can get another win in. Please don't let a whole year go by without Fry getting one more winning Splatfest team. She will be the villain of Sidor if that happens. Please, Nogami. What was your favorite Splatoon 3 Splatfest so far? Let me know in the comments. And remember to hit that like button and subscribe to Alstar716 for more content on Splatoon 3 and other things gaming. I often stream Splatfest alongside other cool games, so you don't want to miss out. I'll see you all next time.